I was just pointing out that this is just as arbitrary as me ontologically no, valuing not. humans. Of course it is. It's arbitrary. It's arbitrary no, it's fun. not. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. So the idea that you're going to tell me so simply, that like, well, the brains are relatively comparable, therefore they have a conscious experience like ours, that's capable of experiencing well-being like us, that's capable of experiencing... So that's a straw man. People seem to think, as humans, because we have words and we describe things, we falsely assume that the categories that we've created for things are far more rigidly defined than they actually are. The reality is that... Our last veganism debate basically concluded with you um, essentially biting the bullet that it's okay to holocaust mentally disabled people. Based. Uh, it wasn't mentally disabled people. It was a special type of human that doesn't exist that are people that are incapable of respecting any sort of like mutual autonomy to be clear, but Yeah, so like severely mentally disabled Okay Well, y you'd agree, you know severely mentally disabled people don't have the intelligence uh, the maturity number of traits that would be required to respect, you know, this idea of mutual autonomy. Um, I mean, if you're talking about that, that level of mental, mental disability, sure. But you already agree that we don't treat those people as human anyway, right? Uh, certainly we do. Do you think that it's morally justifiable to enslave somebody and restrict their autonomy severely for the rest of their life with no chance for them to ever gain their freedom? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. How does so that people that have severe to, mental know? disabilities at that level will oftentimes be given permanent caretakers. Um, I think sometimes they might not even be allowed to vote. I'm not sure. But they'll be given permanent caretakers. They'll be under care of the state. Sometimes they're committed forever into certain um, facilities where they're not allowed to leave, depending on the threat that they represent to other people. Uh, okay, wait. Are you talking about, like, criminal psychopaths or nope. I'm talking about somebody so maybe somebody might have an incredibly severe form of autism that predisposes them towards violent lash outs they're not able to take care of themselves um, these people sure. oftentimes have their autonomy severely restricted by the state and they don't really have a chance to gain it back and you think that's justification to murder them I never said it was justification for murdering them, but I'm saying we don't really treat them with, with all the same like rights and endowments that we give most humans. That they're like it's a severely well, restricted. Well, we certainly thing. do. We certainly do. We essentially do the same thing with children. We understand that. Um, well, I already qualified it out of children because children technically earn their autonomy when they hit the age of 18. These people will never get their autonomy. Well, sure, but um, we do treat them like human beings. We attempt to give them what does it mean um, to treat the someone greatest level of yeah what does it mean to treat someone like a human well look we attempt to give them the greatest number of rights while um understanding that because of their mental condition they're not really able to be given those sorts of liberties or freedoms for their own benefit okay it's kind of so like i think animals, so that sounds right? that sounds like, like the exact you, but then you have the exact what? same position that i do then right no, I, I'm not in favor of murdering mentally disabled people. If there was a, let's say that there was one of these types of people was around other people and they represented a threat and you didn't have like a state body to like um, take care of somebody like that, what would you advocate for? Um, they either can walk around and infinitely do harm to other people and there's no place to like lock them up or put them anywhere. They're not capable of getting a job or taking care of themselves. What would your preferred course of action be? Or what would be a morally acceptable course of action? Okay, well... I don't see how this relates to the conclusion of our debate where you said it's okay to holocaust mentally disabled people. Like I believe, well, about, I'm just like, saying that the context of that about, conversation like, was you gave psychopaths. me. Yeah, that's, that was what we were talking about. The context of that last, last conversation. No, I believe, we weren't. It was an no, island. You said mentally disabled people. I, it was an island full of people that I think that, you, that we agreed would murder anybody that would come across their path. Well, then that's they were our first incapable. debate you're, you're discussing. Oh, I don't remember our second debate then. I don't in general think it's okay to holocaust I, mentally disabled people. I don't know where you got that from. Are literally, okay, well, literally after I think an hour, you basically threw your hands up in the air and you were like, fine, I'm fine with killing retarded people. So uh, our first debate, okay. yeah, we, we, were you, we were discussing the idea of um, social contracts and how that relates to, you know, our treatment of other people. What, what is the, um, our, what kind of mentally retarded people are we talking about? Do you think I think it's okay to kill people well, with like ADHD? Or? Trade equalized to uh, animals. 
what trade equalization has oh. nothing to do with respect for animals or not. There are going to be some animals that are going to be like, no, have higher traits than humans and some humans that have less traits than animals, depending on what we're talking no, about. No, I'm saying like mentally disabled in a way where we trade equalize. So roughly the same level of intelligence as like a pig, let's say. I mean, I can agree to move the conversation forward, but I, would, I don't think I would ever utter a phrase like that. Rough, like, I don't even know what that means to be the same intelligence as a pig. Pigs are relatively intelligent animals, and there are some incredibly stupid humans. Okay. Like, okay, so I don't think I'd be okay with in, murdering like a 75 wait. IQ human, and a 75 IQ human might be less intelligent than like a pig or a dolphin or a gorilla. Like, I have no idea. Okay, well, okay, well that's interesting. Are you fine with killing pigs? Uh, yeah. Really? So, uh, why are you not fine with killing, like... 75 IQ humans, if you agree, some pigs might be more intelligent than they are. Because they're humans. Because they're human. Can can you explain the trait difference that makes it okay to kill the pig that's more intelligent than a human being, but it's not okay to kill the human that's less intelligent than a pig? It's not a trait thing. We're, I'm not, we're not killing or saving based on intelligence. It's just they belong to a class of things called humans, and I think that humans are endowed with like this moral consideration for our life. I don't think animals are. So purely arbitrarily, you make a distinction at human being. Well, why do you respect pigs over plants? Because pigs are sentient, they can experience well-being. Like, yeah, but why do, you value, why, do you value, why do you value the sentience of, of pigs? Well, uh, that's literally the only thing different, like differentiating, you know, non-sentient, well, you know, be beings that can't feel, can't experience pain and suffering, can't experience well-being. Like, I don't know why you're th acting like it's unreasonable for me to value sentience. I didn't say it was unreasonable. I was just pointing out that this is just as arbitrary as me ontologically no, valuing not. humans. Of course it is. It's arbitrary. It's arbitrary no, it's fun. not. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's let's explore that. It's sure. arbitrary. Okay. Do you think me um, valuing sentience, so I value the life of a pig uh -huh. over, say, well-being of a rock, you're calling that arbitrary. Do you think it's equal to me saying um, Jews are worthless, but white people are great. They should be protected. Just You're because two things that's... are arbitrary doesn't mean that they're equal, right? Me preferring one song to another might be arbitrary in the way that me preferring one race of you people to another is arbitrary. But those, wait, 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 hold on. Let me, let me answer. I didn't say they were equal. I said they were equal levels of arbitrariety. Just because two things are equally arbitrary doesn't mean that the two things themselves are necessarily equal. Like I said, my subjective enjoyment of one song for another might be arbitrary in the same way that somebody's preference for one race to another is arbitrary, but that doesn't make those two preferences equal just because they both share the property of being arbitrary, right? The, the things, as soon as, as, soon as you... you've uttered the phrase well-being, you've introduced a concept of normativity that necessarily implies the subjectivity of human like morality, which in my opinion is ultimately arbitrary because it's going to ground out in something arbitrary. If there's something you disagree with there, if, you're, if you believe in some sort of objectively true morality or something, that's fine. But once you begin to Im introduce like normativity, I'm going to attack you on like human subjectivity and then we're going to get weeded out into like a, a meta-ethics debate or something, in my opinion. I mean, unless you think there's a way to escape that. Well, I think we can agree on some fundamental ethical principles. We don't have to have this like weird meta-ethical discussion on like I, I don't believe morality is objective. So obviously, this is going to depend on whether or not we agree on some base fundamental principles. Sure, and one of those fundamental principles for you, a vegan, is going to be that we ought to value sentient life. One of my fundamental and principles is you don't is, value sentient life. Correct. One of my fundamental principles is we ought to value human life. And at the end of the day, there's no real way for either of us to move the other from those positions. Can you explain to me why you value human life? Can like you explain to me why you be... value sentient life? Not really. There's not going to be a good explanation here. Yeah, I, yeah, there is. Um, sentient life is able to experience pain, suffering, well-being. Um, that is literally the basis that I use for valuing um, life is sentience, because that is the only life that can have any kind of experience. Okay, like, but I again, like, I understand like what you're saying, suffer but you're just- you're Well, just, okay, but Destiny, you're... do you value things like suffering? Do you value things like well-being? Well-being is, that's a really loaded term. Suffering is, oh, well is, is a loaded term. How is that a loaded term? What is, does a plant suffer when it's lacking sunlight? No, it doesn't. What do you mean? Okay, then what do you mean by suffering? 
Okay, Destiny, if I were to, like, choke you, let's say, do you think you'd suffer a bit? You're ask, giving me an example of something isn't proving that you have a definition. If anything, you're proving the arbitrary of the words you're using, which is fine. Destiny, I agree they're arbitrary. You're telling me you but don't I'm just understand that, like, what suffering is? Have you ever, like, skinned your knee on a rock? If I were to say that, like, our, uh, our quarterly reports show that the company is suffering, is that suffering the same type of suffering as if I scrape my knee on a rock? Is that suffering the same type of suffering Destiny, as if my dog dies? I is that you suffering know exactly the same what I'm fucking saying. Okay, hold on, just as a real quick. When you when you are, are when you're trying to like say that the answer is self-evident or obvious, I understand that you think okay, you're making a good no, point. No, 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 no
you know, living being moral value. The other trait being human. Sure. Okay. Um, can you define human for me? Um, probably I, it's going to be a complicated taxonomic question, but it's probably something related to our genetic makeup is what makes us humans. Okay, so our genetic makeup is what makes us human? Some, yeah, probably something like that. With, I okay. mean, there's going to be some so, variations for like people with Down syndrome or something, right? Right. So if somebody, say, was lacking a chromosome, had an additional chromosome, um, let's say you just happen to have a completely different genetic makeup uh, versus the entire human species to the point where um, genetically you are not human, is it okay for me to kill you? Um, I don't know. I'd have to think a long time about that. You don't know. You have to think about that. Is repeating you, it supposed to make it? Do you care about being taken seriously at this point? There's an interesting question about um, about things where if they have if if two things appear the same but the underlying things are different, um, is the reference to those things the same thing across like two different worlds, for instance? Well, or are these asked, things fundamentally well, different? I asked you, I'm so I I'm asked, telling you honestly, the the answer to that question is incredibly fucking complicated. I'm not sure. I I don't know what the answer. It, it's would be. complicated whether or not you're in favor of murdering torturing murdering or torturing people that happen to have a different genetic makeup that wouldn't make them human yeah i'm not i'm not sure i don't know i don't Again, i don't know what all that would imply like, do you because have different, any different concern with being taken seriously okay do you, is there anything else do you, you want to be this, a or? joke like nick fuentes or something like i i asked you what you think human means you gave me an answer and then when i give you a hypothetical where okay let's say you're not human by the basis of genetics would you be fine with me killing you? The problem with And these... then you can't give me an answer. Okay, so the problem with these types of comparisons is you're trying to fundamentally alter the nature of something, but say that this end thing that you're seeing, the, I guess I could say phenotype in this, is, in this case, would be exactly the same. You, the, the, it's, you're asking a question that is almost impossible to, to even truly contend with. When you're saying, what if you have a same thing that is a totally different genetic makeup? When the reality is, is that a totally different genetic makeup would never create the same thing. So the, the thing that you're asking me to, to question or to ponder about is, is almost in and of itself a meaningless question. It's like saying, tell me what it's like to exist after you're dead when All existing, right. hold on, I gotta finish. If you're gonna try to play like the word games and do like the, mm -hmm. like the street philosophy or whatever, I'm gonna show you why your question is absurd, right? Mm -hmm. If you were to ask me a question and say, what do you think it's like to be when you're unconscious? I would say, well, the question in some ways is meaningless. I can try to guess at what it's like to be, but to be implies a state of consciousness when you ask the question. So if you were to ask me, how would you treat a being that's just like you, but has a totally different genetic makeup? Well, my understanding of genes means that a totally different genetic makeup isn't going to create anything that's exactly like me or even remotely like me. So the question on its face is absurd. I can try my best to try to engage with your question. It is a really interesting question philosophically there's a whole triangle of reference and semiotic references of things that reference things and have the same name but are actually different there's a really interesting train of thought there but for you to just like self-evidently like oh well isn't the answer obvious it's not obvious it's actually an incredibly complicated question when somebody said water 2,000 years ago they weren't referring to h2o like the actual fucking molecule that we refer to today as water is it the same thing when they said water versus when we saw water i don't know it's a really complicated question i'm answering you honestly i'm sorry that i'm not like walking down the dialogue tree that you like to assassinate non-vegans for but all right Okay, um, so it's starting to sound like you don't necessarily value genetics, and you're talking about valuing um, morphology, how somebody looks. It's. I feel like, like you're trying so hard to just shoehorn me down like a certain dialect. Like, okay, well, the genetics one didn't work. Let's do the morphology argument, and then let's see if we can make it like humans are the same morphology as animals. Like, okay, it feels well, like you can't you're engage the one not honestly. Like, me an answer. I gave you an answer. You're not giving me an answer. You're not asking me real questions. Yes, I am. I asked you how you define human. You said genetics. Then I, when I gave you a hypothetical where if a human being didn't have the genetic makeup of a human, then you said, well, well, a person we assume to be human, like say you, and you didn't have the makeup of a human, the genetic makeup, would you be okay with killing it? Then you didn't give me an answer. So now, and then you allude to this idea of, well, I'd assume genetics would make somebody look different and have different traits like intelligence. So... Uh, I, I don't know. So, well, now it's sounding like you're talking about traits like how something looks. Do you think or that? Do, how do, something do you acts. think that? Um. Do Do you think that something that is completely genetically different than me would appear to be or have the same traits as me as a human? Would it look like a human? Would it be a human? Well, you're the one who said genetics. So, um, 
Wait, can you answer that like, question? If you're or no? giving me, well, Destiny, if you're giving me these answers yeah, like, and then you don't question. agree with your own answer, um, I don't know what that has to do with me expecting like somebody to look a certain way d based on their genetics. You're the one who gave me this answer of genetic makeup. I don't know why it matters if somebody looks a certain way. You're the one who said genetic makeup. So you gave me this random arbitrary thing called gen like genetic makeup is what makes something morally value valuable along with sentience. Okay, well, if you're sentient, you didn't have the genetic makeup of a human being, then I don't know why you'd have a problem with saying, yeah, you should be tortured and killed because you just happen to not have the genetic makeup of a human being. I don't know what something with a totally different genetic makeup would look like or be well, like to me. You, you it would. might be like you a would. banana, like a banana. No, you can't, no, you can't you give would me a, in this hypothetical. The hypothetical is, is nonsense, though. It doesn't make any sense. No, okay, so now we're hypothetical dodging, right, okay. Wait, <laughs> What do you, Destiny? Wait, wait, wait! No, no, no! Me? Wait, wait! Hold on! You're, Destiny, you've got like the chart of this, logical fallacies. No, no, what do you think it no. means when I say the hypothetical is nonsense? Can you please explain that to me? Well, you're trying. Okay. Well, look. You gave me a trait, which was genetics. You didn't mention anything like, okay, what the outcome of those genetics would be. Like, okay, do they look like a person? Do they have four, uh, two legs? Do they have two arms? Two forward-facing eyes? Do they have a round head? You didn't mention anything like that. You just said genetics. So I'm giving you a hypothetical that tests whether or not you value genetics, and clearly you don't. You're talking about something completely fucking different. I'm not. There is, about, an, uh, there is a category of thing called a human. We have a huge, like, understanding of what humans are. Genetically, they tend to be this particular thing, with some variations within genes. And now you're asking me to consider something that is essentially a human with a totally different genetic makeup. That would be like me asking you to consider, how would you feel about a conscious experience that's occurring without a brain? Would you value that conscious experience? Yes. Okay, I, 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 don't, I don't know how I would. So if I were to show you a rock, okay, and I were to say this rock, listen, hold on, no, no, wait, listen. you said you said yes, so I want to ask you now. Let's, so I'm showing you a rock, problem. and let's say that I can say this rock has a conscious experience, but no brain. Could you consider if you would respect that rock or not? I think that would be really hard for you to consider. I think you'd be right to say, well, hold on, Destiny. I don't wait, know what the fuck if, you mean about conscious experience without a brain. To show you a conscious experience that occurs without a brain seems to defy what a conscious experience a, is. The same way that for me to show you a human with a totally different genotype doesn't really make much sense either. I can't I can't imagine a human with a totally different set of genetics. No. Okay, Destiny, I value sentience. If a rock has sentience, if a computer system has sentience, I'd value that sentience and want to protect that life. Um, How do you know if something the, has the, sentience? Okay, well, we can use um, not necessarily deductive reason, but we can use inductive reasoning. Really? Like Tell me If something has how. a brain... Well, look, it, we... Okay, if we agree that human beings have sentience, then uh, organisms with similar structures that exhibit similar traits to sentience that are seen in, in um, subjects with sentience, then we can use inductive reasoning to assume sentience. You don't know that. You have no way of knowing that. You don't know that. Okay, well, do you want to, like, maybe get a biologist on your channel and see if they agree that, yeah, if an animal has extremely similar structures as us, they probably have sentience. Probably. That possibly. It. That might be true. But, like, a biologist can't even show... Okay, first of all, so, well, hold on. First of all, a biologist wouldn't be the one to answer, ask you. It'd probably be, like, a neuroscientist. But even at that, they can't even tell you exactly where consciousness comes okay. from in the human brain. <laughs> the idea that you can well, say, well, animals I, I probably see... exhibit consciousness in the same way. Like, we don't, we have no idea how the theories of minds works of animals, right? I don't even know if they can conceptualize things in different times and place like humans can. Um, that's why they don't have language that's structured the way that we do. That's why language is incredibly unique to humans. Um, th so the idea that you're going to tell me so simply, they're like, well, the brains are relatively comparable. Therefore, they have a conscious experience like ours that's capable of experiencing well-being like us, that's, that's capable of experiencing... So that's a straw man. Okay, sorry. So, uh, you were slippery um, sloping me, so I had to straw man you so to avoid the fallacious... Appeal to authority. Okay, so is my hypothetical logically possible? Um, not necessarily practically possible, but logically possible. Like, I'm not saying what would a bright light that's dark look like. Like, that's not logically possible. I'm not asking if, something like is that. Is it logically possible that a totally different genotype could somehow produce a phenotype that's close to human? It's possible. And if it was okay. the case, then I guess, yeah, I'd probably have to treat that thing similarly to humans if it seemed phenotypically to be identical then to you what another human is. Okay, then you don't care about genetics. All right, so your definition of human. Okay, and on to the next part of the dialogue tree. tree. Okay, so now do we do traits, and then do you want to do name the trait, and then you want to try to find a trait that all animals yeah, right. can pass, but all humans can't pass? Yeah, right, I think you see where this is going. Well, yeah, 
done like yeah, the, I've seen like how the vegan discords work a million times because you can't engage with anything outside funny. of like the very narrow dialogue yeah, tree. Like it's <laughs> it's funny how you know how this works, but you're still bad at it. I, if you think I'm the one that's bad at it, okay. Who do you th okay? Who do you think sounds more reasonable in this debate? Like you're the one giving me traits that you value, and then I literally my rule of thumb is that anytime traits. somebody starts to pull out like this is the X fallacy, this is the Y fallacy, this is the, they instantly sound more unhinged than the other person. You've done it like four times to me. Right, so. I, I'm that's the one my opinion. Unhinged, but, but you're the one who wants to Holocaust beings that just don't fit your weird narrow definition of human with genetics, true. which you, we've already proven you don't even believe in yourself. Okay. okay do you? So wait, me, I'm actually wait. I'm no, curious. No, wait, let me oh, yeah, let me yeah, ask you this. Yeah, go for it. Okay, if Joe Biden were to, you know, say he wants to institute a policy where we genetically test the entire human race, we already, we've already mapped out the human genome. If somebody doesn't fit that genome, just some random person, it's okay to execute them or torture them, you know, treat them the way we treat animals. Would you be in favor of that, or would you be, like, agnostic? Like, uh, you know, I'm not sure if I support that policy, but, you know, this is an interesting kind of discussion on, you know, what makes a human and what makes moral value. What position would you hold? So the assumption here is that if we were to do gene testing of everybody, there are going to be some people that don't have human genomes. Is that the assumption here? Yeah. Let's, let's say that could happen. Would you be in favor of... Um, Holocausting those people that don't fit a human genome. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'd be in favor of holocausting. You don't know. I don't think those people would exist. If they did, then I would obviously have to dramatically reform my view of human life. Oh, okay. So why don't you reform that view of human life? Since we've already established you don't. Sure. If you can start showing me humans that are totally makeup. different, like genetic, like things right. that humans so do, we've it would, it would change a lot of. Well, okay, then we've clearly established that you don't even believe in the principles that you're saying, that you're espousing. So you don't care about genetic makeup. So why don't you tell us what you actually care about? Okay, can you tell me why we should care about the suffering of non-humans? Suffering of non-humans? Well, yeah. because I don't see, it's just a logical extension of human rights. If you value humans, no, 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 I don't no. see a... Tell me why look, we should look, care about the suffering of I'm literally things. explaining this to you. You said it was it's a logical, logical extension, and you're, you're letting that do all the work. It's due to logical consistency. So, look, I value sentient life. Humans are sentient. They can experience pain, suffering, well Why do you, why do you value shit. sentient life? Why do I value sentient life? Well, that's the... That's the life that can experience well-being, pain, suffering. So that's like the base trait that is required to experience those things. Yeah, you're giving and me I descriptions. Pain, I'm like asking pain, you for prescription. Suffering. Yeah, why do you value those things? What, well, okay, now you're... Okay, this is like fucking, um... What is it? Presuppositionalism? Yeah, presupp you're sounding uh -huh. like a presuppositional Christian. Okay, gotcha. So it's um, arbitrary. Just admit that. And then we're good. Well, it's... You don't have it's a reason. To, you don't arbitrary. have a reason to value. It is arbitrary. Like I mean, there's practical reasons for why why I might value it. Morality there's, doesn't like, come from practicality. Those are descriptions. I'm asking. For yeah, I know. I know. We're in the normativity asking, land. Are yeah. you literally, dude? Are you literally saying, oh well, morality is subjective. I can believe whatever I want. Like, is that your your? <clears throat> no, but I'm saying that foundationally, we can pick and choose different axioms. Yours happens to be the valuing of all sentient life. Mine happens to be the valuing of human sentient life. I don't think there's a huge difference between these. You can't two even things. define human. Well, you can define human. And you but can't then give me a good definition it. of sentience, other than sorry, saying, "Well, these sorry. brains are kind of like these other brains, so maybe they have sentience." You don't know Destiny, that. The definition of sentience is the ability to have a subjective experience. I'm not having an issue with defining sentience. Insects have a form of subjective experience, but they probably yeah, don't have all they the. Do. Are you against killing insects? Is that the same thing as killing an animal? Yes, I'm. I'm against killing insects. They're sentient. I, I'm not gonna say it's okay to just. Stomp on a bee. If why it, would I have that position? I, I, don't, I don't know why I assume that. That was my mistake. I'm so sorry. If it came out that plants had sentience, how would you weigh human life versus plant life? How would I weigh it? Um, if it came out that there well, was like I'd a sophisticated way to plants. More, yeah, so I'd certainly care more about human life. Um, if we're talking about, like, there's if, if it happened that plants are sentient, um, I would imagine their level of sentience would be incredibly low. Like, I mean, they'd probably only be able to experience something like light and dark. Um, okay, well, hold on. I'm curious about this. So you have levels of sentiences. How, how, what is the level of sentience of like an animal, like a pig versus a human? And how do you measure these two things? 
Um, I don't know if there's a significant difference. Uh, I mean, like, a human can have maybe things like existential dread and shit like that, but, you know, in terms of things we really genuinely care about, like, pain, suffering, experiencing well-being, like, feeling good, comfortable, shit like that, like... Everything that you just described of... applies to, like, reptiles and bugs. Pain, yeah. suffering, experiencing yeah. well-being. Yeah, so, well, so yeah. but you said that yeah. you didn't value their sentience, so I'm trying... Now, I didn't know that I you had levels of sentience. Say that. Or, or I'm sorry, you said you said you said you didn't experience. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I misspoke here. Um, pain, suffering, and all of this to some extent is experienced by plants, right? They seek out better environments. Leaves will kind of move, or trees will grow in different ways based on where the sun shines. So I'm, you said there's like Not levels of sentience here. Of sentience. Sure. I'm curious how you differentiate between these levels of sentienceness. How do I differentiate? Yeah. Like, so like you said that bugs are on a lower level, animals are on a higher level, humans are on a higher level. Like how do you differentiate between well, these levels? Well, right. So. An insect isn't going to have um, all of the subjective experiences that a human could experience. When you say subjective experiences, what do you mean by that? Well, um, can an insect experience love? Can an insect experience existential like dread? I have no um, idea. I don't know. Probably not. Can pigs? So, yeah, there's... Well, I think pigs can experience love. I don't know if they can have existential issues. What do you but... mean when you say love? Well, you know, they can um, care for one another. Um, they can appreciate someone else. I, I think they do on some level have an ability to experience love. Uh, maybe not the same romantic love that a, a human being can have, but I think on some level they can probably experience love. Okay, I mean, there are bugs um, that take care of their children. Anyway, I'm pretty sure even spiders do, right? Like... Well, sure. I... I I am sure maybe to some extent, maybe they can experience those uh, emotions as well, just probably not to the same extent that a being that has higher functioning ability can. Anyway, uh, like, we're, we're getting a little off track. Like, uh, we, you, again, you clearly don't, like, agree with the statement you made that, you just know, to be clear, the getting are off determined track. by genetics. Yeah, so to be clear, the getting off track here was... You're trying to hardcore get me to rigidly define every single like ontological part of a human, and I and it's going to be very difficult for me to do that. But when I'm asking you questions about like, oh, well, you believe in sentience? How do you prove that? Oh, you think there's different levels of sentientness? How do you prove that? You're getting flustered and saying we're getting off track because when I'm trying to hold you to the same standard you're trying to hold me to, it's incredibly frustrating to answer those questions, which I understand by the way. Hey, I, I wouldn't expect you to be able to give me. I wouldn't expect one, you. I wouldn't expect you to be able to tell me precisely the why one who things said are you different. You valued sentience. I said I valued, so, well, technically I said human consciousness. Sentience is usually the vegan word, but I'm assuming we're using sentience okay. and consciousness as like, uh, like mutually equal words here. But Right, so sentience, consciousness, you can use those words interchangeably, but you're the one who told me you fucking value sentience, so why the hell are you arguing with me on what is sentience? I was asking you because I don't because I didn't know that you had like different levels of it. I was just curious how you measured all of these well, things. Well, there's clearly different levels of sentience. I, I mean, do you think somebody who's born without like a fucking brain and only has a brain stem, like they're going to have the same level of sentience as a person with like a full brain? I don't know if somebody with only a brain stem even has a conscious experience. I don't know if I consider that even like um, a thing worth protecting. Yeah, well, I mean, um, I, I think there's uh, something called hydrancephaly where yep. they're, they're born with um, very uh, either a huge chunk of their brain missing mm -hmm. or a little bit of their brain. Um, they exhibit sentience. Mm, so that, I they don't can think recognize that's faces, true. Shit, that's, shit like, they none of that has to do faces. with sentienceness. None of that has to do with consciousness at all. Well, they can recognize faces. They can respond to na their name, shit like that. Um, it's, it's it's certainly you're, you're a strong about our... indication of sentience. They can experience uh, no susception, so they're they can clearly experience things like pain. So so pa pain is not like a that's not a huge like bacteria will move to avoid negative stimuli. That's all pain is, right? Pain, pain is not some like is existential, the, okay, dramatically well, complicated pain, experience inside a brain. Pain is a subjective experience. Um, it can be biologically defined. Um, Hold on. It you're, requires you're just, no like, deception. It requires no deception. Pain is incredibly complicated. The idea that there's like a strict biological oh, definition for it bad. is not. I'm sorry that this upsets you, dude. I've done way too much research in medicine and fucking all this other shit for you to say something as stupid as like, well, pain is incredibly simple to understand. That's not true. Right. Pain is incredibly I'm complicated. I'm the one being stupid here. I, I'm the one being stupid. I didn't stupid say you're here, being you're stupid. Like, hmm, I'm just saying that you're. I don't, want, I don't know if I'd uh, be in favor of murdering something, <laughs> some, someone who just happens to have different genes than me. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's I'm exactly. Exactly what I said. Different genes. As long as I don't have the white, um, the white skin and the blue hair, or the blue eyes and the brown hair, those are the genes that I care about. Like Nick Fuentes, right? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, like again, I, I'm just wondering. Like we're we're talking about you know, you valuing sentient human life. Okay, well we've gone over the genetic aspect. You do not give two fucks what someone's genetic makeup is. So clearly, human means something else to you, or you just don't care about human humans. You mm -hmm. just care about something that looks like human. Yeah, I like, think I, wanna... what I care about are things are I think being like pretty smart and um, having uh, being nice to your family members. Those are the two traits that I care about. Okay, uh -huh. so if somebody was stupid, like we're, retarded, I'm, I'm gonna, we're gonna walk down the name of the trade argument and, just for him because like, I know he really, really wants to, and I feel bad if I don't give him the opportunity with, to uh, socialization. You'd be in favor of murdering them. Um, no, I guess I'd have to extend the I'd have to extend it really far down to people that have like severe mental disabilities. I have to include their level of intelligence as well. Okay, then and now he's going to compare it to like really smart animals, and we're going to show that like, uh, well, okay, it would be people that have like all the bottom level of human intelligence. I would include all of that. Bottom level of human intelligence. Yeah, whatever the least intelligent human okay. is. Yeah, at least you're able okay. to be that intelligent. Yeah. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And what is a human? Um, I don't know. I guess just like a like a mammal thing that can have like a brain that's complicated enough to experience like. Okay, so pigs, chickens, cows, right? Okay. <laughs> well, are they are they smart enough? Do you think? Sorry. Smarter than the dumbest humans. That's what he says next. Are they? Do you think? Are they? Would they be? Like, are pigs and cows like really smart enough though to meet that threshold? Well, according to you. How according to me? Are pigs as smart as you? Like literally humans? said. You literally just the said. the most retarded humans, right? Um, That's you're what he fine with next. protecting humans that have the bottom, the bottom level intelligence, of intelligence, which is lower than the so most intelligent So that would mean somebody animal. who's literally wheelchair bound, practically no level of intelligence, can only uh -huh. drool. Okay, true. Right. So, right, and pigs like they can have the intelligence up to a five year old. Oh shit! And I guess I have to value five year olds, huh? Um, well, assuming your position on abortion is the same, then I'd imagine. Okay. Well, I've so, like, got myself in you... quite a conundrum here with the name of the trade argument, haven't I? Okay, well, it sounds like you're not taking this seriously anymore because you know you look stupid, so do you want to just end it, or do you want to give me a fucking answer? <laughs> I don't even know what question is. There, are there any final parting thoughts you have? Destiny. You haven't been able to give me a definition of human um, uh -huh. that you're that you're comfortable with, that you would agree is worth protecting. So, uh -huh. okay. So I don't think you're taking this seriously anymore. So I think we're just done. Um, you're not really a serious person to debate. So, okay. I'm sorry. All right. Take care, dude. Be careful. <laughs> Whenever somebody's trying to like shove you into this like very like linear or linear uh, argument tree, and they don't want to like actually like, especially when it's really complicated philosophical topics, um, and they don't want to actually engage with it, and they just like start throwing like, "Well, you're committing the fallacy of all." It's like, bro, get the fuck out of here. Why are we even waste our time with this? Jesus Christ. Okay, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Man, I am doing well. Hang on one second. Okay. Yes. Give me one second. Okay. Jesus. Yeah. Hold on. Wait, hold on. I have to. My chat is gonna. It's just my YouTube chat. Uh, sure. Destiny, how is that unfair of him at all? You never explain this. You just express frustration and give up. So the way that the vegan argument works is he's asking for an infinitely justified version of like how I feel about everything that I'm not going to be able to provide. Um, so there might be a couple ways of doing this. One would be to give me an unimaginably rigid definition of like what is a human. When in reality, any like big category is going to be pretty hard to give you like an exact definition of right because there's probably going to be some humans that break the mold in one way or another but like we have like families of categories of things we recognize much the same with like matt walsh tries to win by saying like well what is a woman right and i could point out that saying like what is a chair or what is a table even though these are seen as like relatively simple things it's actually really 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 hard you can't give me a definition of like what is a table that wouldn't also uh encompass like oh well this could also be a chair it could be a countertop it could be whatever like what is a chair you know do they all have four legs could some have three legs could some have one leg could some have no legs What's your, could a box be a chair? Could a chair be a bright? These, it's really hard to give those rigid definitions or anything, which is fine. I'm okay with that. But when he's trying to push him in an ultra rigid one, it's like, okay, well, fuck, I can't provide that. To use that as evidence that he's won the debate, and then for me to turn out like, okay, well, how do you define like when something is sentient? And, you know, like, how do you even know? And he's like, well, we can inductively reason that if like the brain structures are kind of similar, it's like the brain structures are kind of similar, but they're obviously very different. Um, 
Like, animals don't have language like humans do. That's a pretty big thing about what makes us human. The, the ability to conceptualize things in different times and places, the idea to bring people back to an area in the future. Like, these are things that are uniquely human things. I don't know if animals have conscious experiences in the same way that humans do. And then for him to like, so like easily try to hand wave things like, well, if you ask a biologist where like what conscious experience, biologist, first of all, a biologist doesn't know any of that. That's not in their purview, okay? Biologists study biology. If you ask like a neuroscientist, maybe they would have a better answer, but a biologist isn't gonna be able to tell you anything about conscious experience other than maybe pointing to what they learned different structures of the brain did. Um, also, uh, conscious experiences are incredibly fucking complicated. They're not even fully understood in humans. So to pretend that we can inductively say, well, obviously animals have them like humans do, when we don't even know what a human conscious experience looks like is incredibly stupid. Um, now this isn't at all to say that like, um, this isn't at all to say um, if you think that animals have language, you don't, they don't. And I'm, I'm too lazy to explain that right now because it's a whole other complicated thing that's gonna be really complicated to explain and I don't wanna do that right now. Um, the uh, animals don't have language um, like humans do. Animals have like vague associations. Uh, Pavlovian responses and vague association is not the same type of sophisticated language that humans have. Um, when, you, when you associate a sound with a thing, my understanding, unless the research has changed recently on this, is um, when you say a thing and you associate with a thing, that's how animals use language. Like a bark might mean danger, or a woof might mean friend, or whatever might mean like pet me or something, right? But for me to say like, tomorrow there are going to be five people outside of my tree, that requires a theory of mine that I don't believe any animal possesses. I don't think we, I don't think, I don't even know if gorillas or um, apes or fucking dolphins, I don't think, or elephants or anything, I don't think it's ever been shown that that theory of mine exists, even in the most complicated mammals. Now, maybe that's changed recently, um, but uh, that's my understanding. The way that we engage with language and that doesn't just mean saying words and making associations. Um, that, that, that language as humans have it is an incredibly unique thing to humans. Um, uh, but anyway, yeah, sorry. So the irritating thing is when he's asking, like, well, justify this, justify that, justify this, justify that, justify this. I'm like, I can't just, I can't give you the ultimate justification for everything. He was, it's funny because he was saying, I sounded like the presuppositionalist, when in reality, he was, in a way, the presuppositionalist. Oh, well, if you can't define everything, well, then I'm going to give you my definition. I value all sentience, sentience, not just human sentience. Like, okay, well, why? Well, because I do. Okay, well, why? there's no reason, right? It's all like Can at the end of the day. you stratify those things? Because I, I, I was in and out of the conversation because. He mentioned something about pigs, and I know he's a vegan, obviously, but did he stratify, like, does he value a pig life to the same degree he values a human life? It's not going to be an, a, an intelligent vegan, and I would hope that he's intelligent. An intelligent vegan is never going to say they're the same. They're just going to say that they're all in some bucket of moral consideration. But, like, you might give more to a human than a pig, but they still possess things that make them have moral consideration. Um, so, but he didn't indicate one way or another like what bucket he fell into. You're just assuming that that he does presumably like stratify these things. He should, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I wonder what his like basis for see, the 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 part of the conversation Hold on. that I heard. Fuck. I'm just gonna find this last thing and I'm done. I'm done talking about that and then I'll talk with you about this, but no more chat. Sure. They actually trained Coco the gorilla to use sign language. That's bullshit. Everything you've ever heard about um, animals using like the dog that pushes the thing or the cat, that's bullshit. All that is a lie. Coco the gorilla, everything about her is a total lie. None of that is real. There was one researcher that claimed to be able to do it. They fucking would sign like 52 things for the, finally for the gorilla to understand what's going on. It was all bullshit. Coco is a fucking lie. The dogs on TikTok that push the buttons of the cat are all lies. None of those things can engage with language the way the humans do. Sorry if that bothers you, but that is the case. Look it up on your own. Okay. Boom. Talk to me. Go. You're here now. Ruminate. All right. Stratification. All right. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So two things on the vegan thing, because again, I was in and out of the conversation, but mm -hmm. there were a couple of things that were said that I thought were interesting, especially when you were responding to chat here at the end. Yeah. So when you were talking about rigid definitions, when you say rigid, do you mean mutually exclusive? Like you, you, you made the point that it's hard to provide a definition of a table that wouldn't apply in like 99 situations to achieve. Yeah, when I say rigid, what I mean is some people seem to think as humans, because we have words and we describe things, we falsely assume that the categories that we've created for things are far more rigidly defined than they actually are. The reality is that um, language is complicated 
And when we use words, we're like drawing inferences from other words and other contexts to figure out what a particular thing means. But that's all of that is happening under the hood in our brain. We don't think about it. And we think we're speaking much more clearly than we actually are, which leads us to believe that there are very easy understandings of what is a table and what is a chair, when the reality is, is that's not the case at all. These are unbelievably complicated categories. The problem that I have with people thinking they're simpler than they are, though, is that somebody like Matt Walsh comes up and he has this like he's he thinks he's incredibly smart by saying, well, what is a woman? It's so obvious. It's not obvious at all. It's incredibly complicated. Every category is. But yeah, go ahead. Well, no. So it's interesting because like taking it out of the realm of, you know, pigs and humans, tables and chairs. I remember a conversation that I had months ago uh, that Not So Erudite was moderating with Toftaj and Eucharist. And it was a really good panel. Mm -hmm. And it was about whether or not the GOP is fascist. And mm -hmm. we were in the weeds about the definition of fascist, and I yeah. know that you have your quibbles with it as well. But the point that I made, because they kept like poking holes in, you know, the definition that I proffered and, you know, the, like the, the various like 14 points and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And my point was, you know, if you want to quibble over the definition, that's fine and fair. But the reality is that there's no political definition or political categorization, I think, that you can ascribe to a movement that you can't like poke holes in or that you can't say, well, they don't meet that particular criteria or that it would be foolproof uh, in every possible way. So it was just, it was making me think of that when you were having this conversation or when you mentioned that to chat about, mm -hmm. you know, there, there, there are very few, if any, mutually exclusive definitions for things like table and chair and trying to like encapsulate these really complex issues. The thing is, is that people tend to fight the hardest over certain definitions when there is a lot of um, normativity involved. And when I say normativity, I'm talking about things like morality. When normativity becomes involved, now the definitions become incredibly important because when you call somebody a certain thing, there's a whole bunch of moral baggage that's brought along with the claim, and that's what people want to fight over, right? If you want to call me, like, um, like do I qualify as like a Floridian or a Nebraskan, because I've lived in Florida for six months or Nebraska for 30 years. I, I don't really give a fuck at the end of the day. I don't care. Um, if you want to call me a fascist or not, like I don't even necessarily care about like what a fascist means. What I care about is fascism the equals bad. That, right. It's the moral part of the word exactly that matters, you know? So like, am I considered like transphobic because I have some beliefs that like dysphoria is an important part of the trans experience? Well, some people would consider me transphobic, but they're not using transphobic there to describe your beliefs. They're using it to bring along that normative baggage of saying that person is bad. And unfortunately, what's happened to a lot of the language, especially in political discourse, is we've taken all of these words and we've kind of stripped down their definitions and then we've loaded them with a lot of normative baggage and now we use them to attack somebody. So now when I hear somebody say, oh, that guy, he's a fascist, what I really hear them say is, oh, that guy, I don't like him or he's a bad guy. And that's usually right, what people yeah. are trying to do, yeah. Right. Well, I understand, especially with with people like laymen, especially using it online, the parlance, it's become so common. It is a catch all phrase for, like you said, Ben Shapiro famously uh, during President Obama's 2013 or 2012 uh, State of the Union speech published an article which referred to the State of the Union and President Obama as a, a fascist. And okay. uh, so, I mean, it's not even something that's exclusive to the left. The right weaponizes that word all the time. Yeah, too. for sure. And also, excuse me. Yeah, the light, um, uh, fuck fascism. They did it with fucking communism, <laughs> where they called everything. And there's probably some old fucking Republicans still do it. They call everything that Democrats do is communist. And, com and you, they don't even know what the fuck communism means. Communism right. means left-leaning person that I don't like, right? Yeah, and that goes all the way back to Joseph McCarthy, you know, in the 50s. But, I mean, they, they even appropriate the word for Joe Biden now, I mean, of, yeah. of all people. You know, this establishment, you know, 50-year veteran of, you know, mainstream mm -hmm. democratic policies. He's a communist. He's a socialist, yeah. uh, which, I, you know, obviously I find that fascinating. Um, uh, but, yeah, I mean, so it just seems to me like, you know, language is infinitely more complicated than, like, I, you know, when you dive into it, mm -hmm. than a lot of people accept, I agree. And it makes me wonder if it relies on, uh, what's that phrase, intersubjectivity, right? So, like, when you, when you talk about a chair or a table, even if you can't, like, boil it down to, like, this concretized definition that's mutually exclusive, it's like most of us will recognize a chair and most of us will recognize a table even yeah. if we can't like parse the words. So do you yep. think that language relies on, you know, 
majority consensus or intersubjectivity? Yeah, of course it does. And there's and also language being complicated and all that, none of this is like a problem. It's totally fine that language is complicated. And it's even fine that we have disagreements on what words mean. That's okay. But the thing that is truly damaging is when the problem is when people pretend like language is simple. And then they pretend right. language is simple and then they use that false simplicity to attack others. That's the big problem. Um, because language is not simple. Like I said, it's very complicated. And when people pretend it's simple, then you get into these arguments where it's like, oh, well, it's so obvious what a woman is. Or, oh, it's so obvious what a fascist is. And it's like, well, not really. Like, well, um, I mean, if Pisco here, were here, he could even tell you, you know, and which you picked this up too, about, you know, legal interpretations, right? So like if, if language was so, you know, so again, concretized and mm -hmm. so simple, we would need very few attorneys and we would need very few judges because, well, damn it, it says this on paper. Mm -hmm. I mean, even like broader political concepts like, um, you know, the role of the vice president in terms of the electoral college votes, right? Mm -hmm. we, we saw what happened on January 6th where you had, you know, uh, career politicians like Ted Cruz, many of them attorneys themselves. I mean, Ted Cruz has argued in front of the Supreme Court attempting to make the case that the vice president has some discretion over what votes he counts and what votes he doesn't count, even though Basically, it says, I mean, I don't have it right in front of me, but the vice president shall count the votes. I mean, it's as unambiguous as language can be. And yet, you know, because language is subjective and because you also have bad faith actors, I mean, those words are being parsed left, right and center to the point that there was a measure. And I think it passed, despite most Republicans voting against it, to clarify the language of uh, the Constitution regarding the counting of electoral ballots to basically say, no, for real, the vice president really can't just throw ballots out. When it says the vice president shall count the votes. Mm -hmm. It really means mean, that. <laughs> right. Uh, so, I mean, I feel like, I don't no know. Cap. It's, it's, yeah. Right. No, yeah, no cap. That would be, that'd be like the, the hardcore legal definition of it. But I don't know. I, I, I find that interesting because it, it's kind of like a broader issue outside this whole vegan conversation. And, and it makes you know, politics and law, and I, I'm not a philosophy guy, but I imagine philosophy is so damn difficult because, again, from what little I heard, this dude had all kinds of uh, arbitrary distinctions in his arguments. Again, I, he didn't say whether or not a pig's life and a human's life are equal, but then I, I'm left to assume, assuming that he does recognize a disparity, mm -hmm. if he says a pig is sentient and a human is sentient, he kept talking about sentience, what makes a human life to him worth more than a pig's life? Well, once you've been why... bucketed into sentience, assuming he's being intelligent, which again, I'm going to hope he would be, is he would go on to say that, like, well, we can value different levels of sentienceness or sentience. But didn't you me. point out, didn't you point out that how the hell can you possibly measure? I mean, I'm sure you can eyeball it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, strata of sentience among, you know, mammals and animals and whatnot, but like, there's no. We have no possible way to to measure that, right? I mean, yeah, I would say that, of course. Well, but. so I, I guess my point is, like, it seems like to to your point, and as you were saying to chat, uh, it, his argument was so much more reliant on arbitrary distinctions and 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 uh, assumptions than he wanted to admit. Like, yeah, he, that's he always the point. Yeah, and that's yeah. my that's always my frustration is people act like they're on stronger ground than they really are. They truly are not on ground that's as strong as they think they are, um, which is what is ultimately the frustrating part to me. Gotcha.